as a small tangent or actually a very big tangent, but uh, <laughs> proof by compilation is a beautiful concept. In a sense, the way of doing physics with this model is by running it or compiling it. And Some level, yes. It, have you thought about, and these things can be very large, is there totally new possibilities of computing hardware and computing software, which allows you to perform this kind of compilation? Well, algorithms, software, okay. hardware. So, so first comment is, these models seem to give one a lot of intuition about distributed computing, a lot of different intuition about how to think about parallel computation. And that particularly comes from the quantum mechanics side of things, which we didn't talk about much yet. But uh, the question of what, you know, given our current computer hardware, how can we most efficiently simulate things? Yeah. That's actually partly a story of the model itself, because the model itself has deep parallelism in it. Yes. The ways that we are simulating it, we're just starting to be able to use that deep parallelism to be able to be more efficient in the way that we simulate things. Yeah. But in fact, the structure of the model itself allows us to think about parallel computation in different ways. And one of my realizations is that, you know, so it's very hard to get in your brain how you deal with parallel computation. And you're always worrying about, you know, if multiple things can happen at different on different computers at different times, oh, what happens if this thing happens before that thing? And we've really got, you know, we have these race conditions where something can race to get to the answer before another thing, and you get all tangled up because you don't know which thing is going to come in first. And usually when you do parallel computing, there's a big obsession to lock things down to the point where you've you've had locks and mutexes and God knows what else, where where you've you've um, you've arranged it so that there can only be one sequence of things that can happen. So you don't have to think about all the different kinds of things that can happen. Well, in these models, physics is throwing us into forcing us to think about all these possible things that can happen. But these models, together with what we know from physics, is giving us new ways to think about all possible things happening about all these different things happening in parallel. And so I'm, I'm they, guessing- They have built-in protection for some of the parallelism. Well, causal invariance is the built-in protection. Causal invariance is what means that even though things happen in different orders, it doesn't matter in the end. As a, as a, as a person who struggled with concurrent programming in, uh, <laughs> in like Java, uh, with all, all the basic concepts of uh, concurrent programming, that, that if there could be built up a strong mathematical framework for causal invariance, that's so liberating. And well, that, that could be not just liberating, but really powerful for massively distributed computation. Absolutely. No, I mean, you know, what's eventual consistency in, this, in distributed databases is essentially the causal invariance idea. Yeah. Okay, so that's, but-, but, but Have I, you thought about, uh, you know, we're, like really large simulations? Yeah, you, I mean, I'm also like, thinking about, look, the fact is, you know, I've spent much of my life as a language designer, right? Yes, so I can't right. possibly not think about, you know, what does this mean for designing languages for parallel computation? In fact, right. another thing that's one of these, you know, I, I'm always embarrassed at how long it's taken me to figure stuff out. But, you know, back in the 1980s, I worked on trying to make up languages for parallel computation. I thought about doing graph rewriting. I thought about doing these kinds of things, but I couldn't see how to actually make the connections to actually do something useful. I think now physics is kind of showing us how to make those things useful. And so my guess is that in time, we'll be talking about, you know, we do parallel programming. We'll be talking about programming in a certain reference frame, just as we think about thinking about yeah. physics in a certain reference frame. It's a certain coordinatization of what's going on. We say, we're going to program in this reference frame. Oh, let's change the reference frame to this reference frame. And then our program will seem different and we'll have a different way to think about it, but it's still the same program underneath.